Hi everyone, today we're going to be learning about Sassafras albidum nuttonis, which oddly enough just goes by its genus name, Sassafras. Now Sassafras is a deciduous tree that can grow to be about 9 to 18 meters tall, and this species is known for being extremely aromatic. The leaves have been used for Cajun cooking, whereas the roots have been used to make oils for perfumes, candies, and soaps. Also, the Native Americans used sassafras to treat a variety of different ailments, such as diarrhea, nosebleeds, and heart issues. However, a major chemical compound in sassafras is safrole, which has been banned by the FDA due to showing evidence to cause cancer in rats when presented at high levels. Therefore, the root beer that you buy from the store will be made with an artificial sassafras extract or something similar that doesn't contain safrole, but it still tastes like root beer. Now, if we take a look at a distribution map of sassafras in North America, we'll see that it's native to Eastern North America and rare in a few states. If you're looking to add sassafras to your landscape, it grows in hardiness zones 5 through 9. Now, when it comes to sassafras' natural environment, it prefers areas that are moist, well-drained, and sunny. It can be found in habitats like forest openings, on roadsides, and in prairies. This species doesn't mind different soil types, but it doesn't do well when it's in the shade. While in the shade, it probably won't reproduce sexually and will only make clones of itself. Alright, so sassafras can be identified a few different ways, but we're going to start off with the bark. So here we have a photo of the bark of a young sassafras tree. This bark is orange to brown in color, and we can see some white lines etched in. Now, when this species matures, the bark becomes much thicker and deeply furrowed. The bark will also become mostly gray with orange underneath. A cheap trick is if you scratch the bark and sniff it, it should become very aromatic and citrusy like Fruit Loops. Also, rabbits will eat the bark of sassafras trees during the winter time. Okay, so moving on to the twigs, they're pretty distinct because they're green in color during the winter time. And that's a trait that not many species have. Also, if we take a look at the apical bud, we can see that it has black dots right below it. That's a very distinctive trait of sassafras. Now, our lateral buds are smaller than our apical bud, and they're arranged in an alternating pattern. Now, white-tailed deer will browse the twigs of sassafras, so if you're going to try growing some saplings, be sure to fence them in or something so that the deer can't get them. Lastly, for our twig, you can also scratch the twigs and see if they smell like Fruit Loops to see if you have yourself a sassafras tree. Alright, here's my favorite way to identify sassafras, which is by its leaves. The leaves of sassafras are simple, smooth, and have very distinctive lobing. Three shapes of leaf will typically occur on a tree, which is the one-lobed football shape, the two-lobed mitten shape, and the three-lobed ghost shape. You can have instances where four or five lobes occurs on the leaf, but that's really rare. You can also have instances where you mostly or only have the one lobed football shaped leaf on the tree. This is likely due to the tree not doing so hot and it can make identification more difficult. However, you can still look for that green stem and crumble the leaves to see if you smell that Fruit loop smell. I'll mention that many insects feed on the foliage of sassafras, especially the caterpillars of certain butterflies and moths. And I guess I suppose I'd want to do the same if I were a caterpillar. Sassafras blooms April to May, and when it does, it produces an inflorescence of yellowish-green flowers at the tip of the twig. Sassafras is dioecious, so male and female flowers occur on separate plants, but generally each flower has six sepals that resemble petals, but no actual petals. Now, the male flowers have nine fertile stamen, whereas the female flowers have six infertile stamen and one pistil. The flowers bloom for about two weeks and are pollinated by bees, flies, wasps, and beetles. After pollination takes place, a green drupal form that will ripen around August to October to be a beautiful dark blue color with a red pedicel. Each droop contains one seed, and these seeds can remain dormant in the seed bank for around six years. The fruits are dispersed by birds, mammals, and water, and the seeds germinate in the spring. Additionally, this species can reproduce very effectively through its root systems, but this reproduction is asexual. Lastly, if you're thinking to yourself, hmm, sassafras is really similar to spicebush in the fact that it's really aromatic, has yellow flower clusters, and forms droops. 
Well, you'd be onto something because sassafras and spice bush are in the same family. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about sassafras, otherwise known as sassafras albedo with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I hope to see you all in my next video.